Welcome back to the next technical video. A very quick plug, if you like this video and you don't want to miss any more like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. That means you get notifications about new videos and you won't miss any of the good stuff. Plug over, on with the technical. One of my favorite things about being a farm vet is that it is seasonal. We see different challenges and have a different workload depending on if it's spring, summer, autumn or winter. But those challenges aren't necessarily identical from year to year because as farmers know, the weather isn't set in stone. So some examples, after a wet summer and autumn, we might expect to see a higher liver fluke challenge than normal. In a dry summer, we might expect to see more cases of poisonings. If cattle and sheep are driven to eat plants, they would normally pass over as the grass dries up. And the timings of the first spring frosts will affect the nematodirus infections in lambs. These are the more classical examples, but there are more specific and more sporadic examples too. In 2022, as detailed in one of the very handy on the hoof updates by SAC, there has been an uptick in acorn poisonings following a bumper crop, which was a result of a cold wet snap in the mid spring, followed by a hot summer. Recent windy weather around the UK has also compounded this because those trees have then shed a lot of that bumper crop in a short space of time. The NFU in Wales has recently spoken up after one Welsh farmer lost a dozen heifers to this. When thinking about a acorns as a source of food, the first species of livestock that probably springs to mind is the pig. Whether that's the ancient panage systems which still operate in places like the New Forest and further afield in Europe or the black Iberian pigs of Spain which provide the delicious and very valuable Hamon Iberico, apologies I never took Spanish at school. There's a good reason for this association. Pigs have a very high tolerance to acorns and indeed part of those ancient panage systems I just mentioned was that the pigs would go in and hopefully hoover up the acorns ahead of other species which were more susceptible to poisoning. Two of those species are cattle and sheep, although even pigs can be overwhelmed by massive volumes. The toxins which cattle and sheep are more susceptible to are actually a bit of a cocktail. They have exotic names like pyrogallol, gallotannins, and polyhydroxyphenols. These toxins are present not only in the acorns but in the leaves of the oak tree as well, and they bind to proteins within the animal eventually causing kidney failure. In addition, these toxins can cause malformed calves and abortions when in calf cows are exposed to them. The younger, fresher leaves of the oak tree seem to be more toxic than the mature ones. Likewise, the green acorns appear to be more toxic or perhaps just more palatable than the ripe brown ones. Livestock tend to eat more of them when they're feed restricted or if there's a sudden increase in access. So as we alluded to earlier, if a storm knocks half a ton of acorns onto the floor in one night, livestock are presented with a sudden abundance. As with most poisonings, cattle are probably higher risk than sheep and especially young cattle. That's down to how they eat. Cattle are less fussy and more inquisitive in their diets. As fallen acorns mature and weather a few frosts, they seem to become less palatable and cases of poisoning seem to tail off. As what happens for when an animal is suffering with the signs of acorn poisoning. The signs don't tend to present for a few days at least. They can be quite vague, they typically include a lack of appetite. Abdominal pain in cattle and sheep, this often presents as a tucked up appearance or perhaps prolonged lying around, in addition to an initial constipation followed by diarrhea with a black tarry dung. You can also see excessive drinking, excessive urination, and jaundice. Badly affected animals tend to die one to three days later. Those which got a lesser dose can survive, but it's unlikely that they fully recover because of the permanent kidney damage. I've been lucky enough never to see one of these cases, but like a lot of plant poisonings, they can be quite hard to pin down and require a bit of detective work, especially as this is the sort of thing a vet might only see a handful of times, if ever, in their career. The key thing is though to get your vet on the phone. They may want to talk to their lab and do a post-mortem as there are some characteristic changes to the kidney, although the acorns aren't necessarily still going to be present in the room and if they open that up. They may also want to do a quick walk of the paddocks to check for signs of access to acorns. Unfortunately, treatment is unlikely to be rewarding, again due to that permanent kidney damage, and there isn't any specific treatment, it's all supportive. So things like fluids, nursing, pain relief. After a diagnosis, or perhaps even just a suspicion of a diagnosis of acorn toxicity, the most important thing is likely to be to prevent access to areas of high acorn fall or perhaps immature stands of oak trees. Certainly 
until they're unpalatable or have broken down. Now that might be keeping them out of entire paddocks or it might be electric fencing off certain sections of paddocks. I appreciate it's an awkward solution but perhaps the most appropriate. If access really can't be avoided, the next best compromise might be providing some more palatable feed to essentially distract livestock away from the acorns and or oak trees. As an aside, I think this is a really interesting potential pitfall of silvo pasture. That is the integration of trees into grazing livestock systems. Don't get me wrong, I think there's huge potential upsides to it as well. And oaks are great trees. They're great for supporting an abundance of wildlife species in the UK. They provide a fantastic, if slow growing timber, and they're part of our heritage, at least in the UK. With all the enthusiasm for planting trees in the UK at the moment, hopefully integrating them into farms rather than replacing them, it would be easy to get carried away and plant the wrong tree in the wrong place, leading to certain problems becoming more common than they were. So that's not just acorn toxicity, but perhaps things like fly strike and mastitis with increased fly pressure being next to woods, increased predation of lambs by corvids, again high pressure being next to wooded areas, or in the case of encroaching blackthorn, that, that is the thorny bush which provides you your slows for your slow gin, more foot abscesses as those thorns can penetrate the hoof capsule. I'm certainly not advocating against trees if farmers and landowners are going to invest a large amount of capital and effort in planting trees, trying to forecast and avoid those negative unintended consequences seems prudent. That's it for this one guys. I have been a bit behind with the on-farm vlogs with being away in Sydney, but they are coming. You'll see plenty of them shortly. In the meantime, if you don't want to miss those, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it if you haven't already. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment with some feedback. All the best and I will see you for the next one.